Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a fabulous day. Today is all about handbag storage. I wanted to share some tips, recommendations, and show some examples of how I end up storing my handbags. I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get started, shall we? One of the questions that I get asked the most is if I end up storing my handbags in their dust bags, especially because during filming, you see them in the background out and about, but whenever I take a picture on Instagram and I'm up against the same shelving, you see them covered in their dust bags. So a lot of people wonder, well, what's the deal? Do you use them? Do you not? Many of you already know the answer, but yes, I do store all of my handbags in their dust bags at all times. So after filming, all these guys end up going back. And trust me, I have tried to leave them out, and I do think that it looks beautiful, but my paranoia gets the best of me every single time, especially because in this room, I do get a lot of sunlight, which I will talk about later on in the video. So being able to cover them definitely gives me a lot more peace of mind. And I've been storing them the same way for years. And I've really memorized which bag is in each dust bag, so it's not like I need a picture or anything like that. And I'll be honest that by having them in the background out and about also kind of serves a dual purpose. The first one being that it does help provide some eye candy so it's not just a boring background, but also a lot of these dust bags are white, yellow, or off-white, and in combination with the white shelving, it would make the video look a lot darker even with the lighting that I have for my camera. So it's able to kind of pick up the colors of each of the bags so that way it's not so dark. So that definitely ends up helping out as well. The only time I will leave a handbag outside of the dust bag is when I get a brand new bag from Louis Vuitton that does have Vaquetta. And the reason I do that is because by leaving it out when you first get it, you're able to kind of build a base to get that nice golden, even honey patina as time goes by. But after those three days, oh yeah, it goes right back inside of the dust bag. So like I said before, I do appreciate the way that they look when they are on display and I do think it looks gorgeous, but my paranoia always gets the best of me. I stuff all of my handbags with air paper. I absolutely love these. And the reason why I like them so much is because they really help to maintain the shape without adding any weight to the handbag. And they're available in a variety of different sizes. You can either buy them in bulk on Amazon or from moving companies, or anytime you get a package at home, you can always save them and put them inside of your handbags. But I think that these are wonderful. I've been using them for years and I've never had any issues with them whatsoever. I will have to say to just make sure not to overstuff your bags with these either like to the point where they're busting at the seams because that can cause the materials to stretch or it can cause uh, the, the bag to wear unevenly as time goes by. But I am a big, big fan of them. In some cases, I also have organizers that I leave in my bags at all times, like my open totes, such as the Neverfull and the Deauville, especially the Deauville, because that bag, the material that it's made out of, it doesn't have a whole lot of structure. It has a tendency to turn into a beautiful mess. So by using an organizer at all times and still having air paper in here it really helps to maintain the shape and it doesn't cause the creases on the sides to get too intense my hubby custom built the shelving unit behind me and it's made it a lot easier but before the shelving unit I had bookcases and before bookcases I used to make a tower out of the boxes that the bags would come in because I didn't have a lot of space so I would kind of make a little tower I'd make a little Christmas tree with a bigger base and kind of set my my bags on top of those boxes you know so whether you do have open shelving whether you do have closet shelving or bookcases or glass cabinet anywhere where I feel that you can end up putting your bags in the upright position I think is always best because that's another thing I do store all of my handbags in the upright position now I know I've heard some people say that um they store their classic flaps, for example, they've been told by their sales associates that they should store the bag uh, laying down. It's all a matter of personal preference. Personally, it's not for me, just because I feel that it will wear unevenly as time goes by, because I feel that the quilts on the bottom will start to get really flat. Meanwhile, you have the quilts on the top that are very puffy, you know, and I've heard some people say that they do end up rotating what side they end up laying it on, but just in general, I do prefer to have them all in the upright position. But if you are limited, on space and you don't have an area where you have bookcases or shelving units or anything like that, anywhere where you can end up just sitting your bags in the upright position, I think is always the best way to go. And plus, you don't necessarily have to have them facing forward. You can also have them sideways. That way you can also maximize your space. Direct sunlight. As I said previously, I get a lot of sun in this room, so I really try to minimize the exposure that my handbags get. Because I feel that if you end up storing your handbags in an area that does get those constant rays through the window or that does get that direct sunlight onto the bag, it'll end up causing the color of the bag to completely change. It might cause it to yellow a lot faster or to fade altogether, even with the dust bag. Because the dust bag, the rays can still go through there. So I always recommend to have your bags off to the side somewhere where the sunlight won't hit it directly. For example, if you 
do have light colored handbags such as a white handbag, a beige handbag, anything along those lines or kind of like a uh, pastel. If you do end up storing your handbag in direct sunlight with the dust bag, it'll still cause it to yellow, especially because those materials have a tendency to yellow. And when you add a lot more exposure of the sun to it, it'll just happen that much faster. Another example, let's say that you have patent leather pieces and let's say that you have Louis Vuitton's Vernis Amarant. I absolutely love that color. But if you do end up storing that handbag in direct sunlight, the side that ends up hitting the light, that clear coating will start to get a lot foggier and the color will start to become a lot more muted than the backside. The backside will look very vibrant and the front side won't look so hot. So that's why I always recommend, if possible, to keep your bags out of direct sunlight because the rays, as warm as they are and as wonderful as they are, they can be somewhat deadly to the color of your bags. While storing them in boxes does keep the sun away, it can also cause the leather to end up drying out a lot faster. Now I know that a lot of associates have told their clients that they should end up storing their handbags in the boxes, especially if they do have limited space, so I completely understand that. Personally, I am not a fan of that. Personally, I disagree with that, just because the leather needs to be able to breathe. If you do have your leather handbags in a confined space, it can cause the leather to either dry out and it can also cause the leather linings to start to bubble a lot faster due to the heat. So like I said, to each their own. Personally, that's something that I prefer not to do. I have always stored my handbags outside of their boxes and so far so good, uh, but it's all a matter of personal preference. And lastly, I do avoid stuffing my handbags with any type of towel, blanket, or any other type of material that might create moisture. Because many, many years ago, I did end up stuffing a handbag with a towel. I thought I was super cool because I was keeping the shape. When I did go to use that handbag, it smelled awful. It smelled like mildew. It had this musty smell because of the moisture that the towel had created in there. So ever since then, I had been using the air paper. And like I said previously, the air paper has worked out perfectly. It still maintains the shape. It doesn't cause it to smell or anything like that. And it also doesn't end up adding any weight. I thought I would also show you some examples of how I store my bags just to give you a better visual. So the first one is the Chanel Jumbo Double Classic Flap in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. This is exactly how I store it. I do have the chains on top with the rest of the chain kind of fed through and it's in the main compartment. Let me just show you guys very, very quickly. There we go. You can see that there's the air paper and there's the rest of the chain. Now I know some people do end up storing their classic flaps differently because the uh, the dust bag that this bag comes with, it does have an open pocket. There are some associates that say that you can end up feeding the chain through here. That way you don't have to worry about the chains being on top. I know some people fear that the weight of these might cause an indentation. Personally, I haven't had any issues with that. As you can see, it still looks as good as new and I haven't had any issues with the side either. So it's it's all a matter of personal preference, you know, and like I said, some people do end up using the dust bag to hide the chain. I just prefer it on top. It makes it a little bit easier. This bag also came with felts. I do end up using both felts. Let me just show you that. So there's one on the first flap and this one goes on the second one. Another thing that I do with classic flaps, and it might be a little bit extreme, but it does give me peace of mind, is that I don't completely close them with the turn lock closure. Because this bag does come with a little compartment and that compartment does have a zipper and that zipper has a tendency to dig into the second flap and cause an indentation. So I try to minimize that as much as possible. So every time I go to store this, I always have it opened up. And as many of you know, this is a bag that isn't in my rotation too, too often. So I feel that if I was to close this um, completely the way that it's supposed to, I feel that that indentation might be a lot more noticeable. With bags that do have a removable strap, such as the Palm Springs Mini Backpack, or the Givenchy Antigona, or the Celine Anna, or anything like that, I always take the strap off, I coil it, and I either put it at the bottom of the bag, so that way I can put the air paper on top, or in this case, I end up coiling it and putting the strap on the back side, and then I have the air paper in the front. I just feel that it makes it a little bit easier. Now, I will admit that sometimes when it comes to those removable straps, if you do end up coiling it over and over again, and if it's a bag that isn't in your rotation too often, what might end up happening is that uh, that coil might be a little bit more noticeable when you go to use the, the bag, either crossbody or on your shoulder. Sometimes you'll see that it has a little bit of a swirl to it, but the more and more that you use it and with the movement that you create when you do end up using that bag, I personally feel that uh, that, that same type of coiling will go away very quickly. So that's why I still end up storing it the same way. Even if it does have that coil initially, it starts to go away once I start to put my items inside and once I start to use 
use the handbag. Now with bags within my collection that I can't remove the strap or I can't remove the chain, I want to give you guys two examples. The first one is the Chanel GST. Now because this is an open tote, I do have an organizer inside plus air paper. So I end up putting those things in first and all I end up doing is I end up uh, putting the straps right on top. So that way I'm not causing any type of creases on the leather or anything like that. The second example is the Louis Vuitton push out accessoire. Now I know that technically you can remove the strap. Personally, I think it's a little bit fussy just because you do have uh, this little knot on this side. So all I end up doing is that I remove the D-ring off of one side and I end up feeding the strap along the bottom of the bag and I store it like so. And then I just put it in the dust bag because I feel that with these types of straps, because they're a little bit thinner, they do have a tendency to twist on their own or uh, sometimes these end up, I don't know, sometimes I feel like these end up wearing a little bit funky if you're not careful. So I just feel that by kind of uh, putting it on the bottom and feeding it all the way up, I'm able to kind of keep the shape of the bag so that way I don't get any type of twists or anything like that. I do like to store my speedies a little bit differently, whether it's the classic or the bandolier. And the majority of my classics did come with a drawstring dust bag. Now I do like these dust bags, not necessarily for this bag, just because if you go to store them uh, with the name in the upright position, for example, this is a classic 30, it ends up smashing down the sides just because it doesn't have a lot of space down at the bottom. So with drawstring dust bags and a silhouette like this, I do like to put the dust bag on the side. So that way, I'm able to close it and I also still have enough material at the very top that I like to have the handle stay in the upright position. So I end up kind of folding in as much of the material as possible and voila, it is ready to go and stay on the shelf in the upright position. The last example that I want to show you is how I end up storing my Chanel Deauville. This is in the size large. So if I was to store it without air paper, without an organizer, and just throw the dust bag right on top, it would turn into this. It would turn into a beautiful mess that you guys have heard me say before. Because the material doesn't have a whole lot of structure, it really doesn't hold its shape, and you end up with a lot of creases. So once I add the organizer, I kind of wanted to do a before and after, if you will. Once I add the organizer, it really starts to take a completely different shape. So. I have a Samorga organizer for the Deauville and check it out. Just by putting in the organizer, already it's starting to take form, which I love, but I still have a few little wrinkles on the side. So what I end up doing, this might be a little extreme, all right? <laughs> I'm taking, uh, storing my bags to a, to a different level, I guess, I don't know. But um, I do like to put, two pieces of air paper on either side. So, I apologize if it is loud, it is not my intention. I like to put it all the way down and I feel that it really makes a difference in that crease. It's not as, it's not as noticeable. So I do it on this side as well. There we go. Now, when it comes to these little chains here, I also like to pull them all the way through and I like to put them in between the lining and the organizer, like so, on both sides. That way they're not kind of hanging out, you know, hanging out and about or what have you. All right. Now I'm gonna put in some air paper. Uh, so give me just a second. And there we go. It is full of air paper. It's all the way to the very top. These two pillows actually came with a bag uh, when I got it. So I just kind of put them on top and that way the handles are kind of in the upright position as well. And as you can see, the sides are not as creased as before. Uh, the front isn't as creased and the back isn't as creased. So that's why I think that by doing uh, the organize, by putting the organizer and by putting the air pillows or the air paper, it really helps uh, bags like these that have this type of material to help keep their shape for, uh, for a long, long time. So that does it for my storage video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to give you some ideas on how you can store some of your pieces. And remember, these are just my tips. These are things that I have been doing for years and I have been very comfortable with the way that my bags have been wearing. But if something doesn't seem right to you or if you have a different way of storing your handbags, by all means, follow your gut instinct. You know, cause kind of like what I said earlier, some people prefer to use boxes. I prefer not to. So it's definitely a matter of personal preference. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.